Hey boaters, Keith McGowan here. I am the Outboard Dad here to help you have a better boating experience by maintenancing and understanding before you buy a motor. We're in the middle of this project. Well, not the middle. We're on the starting stages of this project, which may be a dud. We won't know until we completely tear it down. Don't forget my used outboard motor buying guide is for sale on Amazon right now for $20. And for a limited time, if you send me an email at keith at outboarddad.com, I will help you with a motor that you're looking to buy, a boat you're looking to buy for a half an hour phone session. If you send me proof of purchase to keith at outboarddad.com, I will offer that to you. It's a $250 value to help you out. So what we're gonna do next, we're gonna take the side cowlings off. We're gonna disconnect our battery, right? We don't want the battery hooked up while we're doing this. We're gonna get our eye hook on here and we're gonna start removing main bolts so that we can pop this block off. Do you think the bolts are gonna break? Do you think we're gonna snap them off? Do you think we're gonna have to drill them out? Are we gonna have to torch it like we did the 150 horse Mercury? Or is this gonna come off without too much trouble. What do you think? Send me a comment and we're gonna get at this and we're gonna find out for sure. Cowling has bolts through here, so I got this one loose already. And we have one here. We already disconnected the wires for our trim switch, so we don't have to worry about that. But there are some tubes here connected that go to our motor and come, come out of our motor. And there's a broken one that goes to our pisser tube here so we got to make sure we disconnect those as well let's disconnect those hoses and then we'll pop these covers off all right oh missed one you do have to take them all out funny like that now sometimes you yank on it and break it and realize that and now you're epoxying and stuff like that it's not the end of the world but you know things happen so we get this half out of the way so now comes a moment of truth. We're gonna get the ratchet out here and we're gonna start with these big fat bolts, the longest ones that are in there. And let's see if they come out or if they snap off. Some will say you should run the motor first, warm it up, get it up to full working temperature and then the bolts will come out easier. Fortunately, the motor didn't run on just two cylinders and it's winter time. I know I'd hook up a hose. I wouldn't have a hose. I would burn up the water pump. I'm just going for it, man, and see what happens. So it's pretty stiff, the first one. I'm gonna get my hammer out and I'm gonna tap on this bolt. I'm gonna work it back and forth and tap up on it, work it back and forth. I'm gonna do that with all of these. Not happy with how it's going. Don't wanna overdo it and end up breaking a bolt off sooner than I have to. So we're gonna change it up a little bit and use a little impact. Some nice Harbor Freight impact. Okay, one long bolt left. It's being stubborn. Impact kind of moved it a little bit back and forth. Don't want to work. Again, I don't want to take a chance of breaking it. <clears throat> Time to get the torch out. I'm going to heat it up here inside the sleeve, right? Because that's a long bolt in a sleeve and also the bottom of the block. I removed the rubber pieces here, so I'm not melting anything. The rubber piece that was here. I don't think I'm going to get into this coil or anything because I'm going to be right in here with my heat, try and keep it concentrated, and we'll heat this up, and we'll try it again, and let's see if it'll come out. Make sure you wear your eye protection. Don't be a tough guy. So we heated it up two times, even a third time now, and it's starting to move, right? I, I get the gun on there, and it goes a little bit one way, a little bit back the other way. We're going to let it sit now and what the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take the rest of these bolts out and hopefully that takes some pressure off. We're going to try and get some lube maybe in there if we can. Doubt we're really going to get in there what those threads are but we're going to keep trying. We're going to take the rest of those bolts out and then hopefully when we shock it I'm going to let it completely cool down now. Try it again tomorrow or maybe later today depending on how the day goes and then we can always heat it again back and forth. Remember we did it several times with that mercury before we got it out. Really don't want to break the bolt off and try and get it all the way out if I don't have to, but that may be what we need to do. So we're going to continue on with this. All right, this last bolt, boy, has it been stubborn. 
I got it to move a little bit back and forth with the uh, Harbor Freight electric impact gun. Now I'm going to have to get my air compressor running, so we're going to make a little noise in here. Let me show you where you're at, where we're at, how it's turned out a little bit. And you'll see the washer. I just want to show you this. Okay, so you can see the lock washer there. You can see the split in it, and you can see it's loosened up just a little bit. So I have an idea of what I'm going to do here next. I'm going to take that washer. I'm going to try and remove that washer. I'm going to try and knock it out of place so I have a little bit of room. Then I'm going to get my engine hoist up here on the top and pull because right now I have play in this motor. When I say play in this motor, I'm going to put my pry bar in here and I can move this, right? You can see it coming up and down, right? So I have some play in this engine right now. If I step back from it, you can see the whole block moving, right? So what we're going to do is I'm going to get that washer. I'm going to bust it out of there. And I'm going to knock this up with my hammer with my engine hoist pulling up on my engine. Let's see if we can get it. If I can get it up enough, maybe I'll get that to turn a little more. As you see here, the discoloration, I did heat it up with my torch once or twice. Actually, two times I've done that, maybe even three. And I'll probably heat it again. And let's see if we can get this moving. Got my engine hoist hooked up. Now I'm going to try and break that washer out of there, that lock washer. Haven't ever really done it this way before. Just an idea came to me. Let me know your thoughts. So trying to catch the edge of the lock washer and break it out is just spinning around now. So I may have to get in here with my cutoff wheel a little bit, see if I can get that out of there. I was hoping it would hold tight and I'd be able to spread it apart. I was able to just slice a little with the cutoff wheel. Haven't gotten it all the way out yet, but it's gotten some pieces are okay that's a little piece I'm gonna try to slice another piece out of it I got it to spin so it's kind of like a C shape right now because I got one chunk out of it with the cutoff wheel trying not to damage the bolt because I don't want to damage the bolt or the head of the bolt so I can still get a, a grip on it so I was able to get that out of there so now you can see, so now you can see I have that much room. So I'm going to put some, some lift on my hoist and I'm going to smack this. We'll get this rubber out of the way so I don't hit it. And then we'll hit that bolt, see if we can get this to move. Actually, I'm wondering first if I should try and tighten it with my, I'm going to use my air gun this time. I don't really have a lot of CFM out of my compressor. It's a small one horsepower old Sears Craftsman compressor. And I have a pretty big air gun, half inch air gun. I'm going to try that first, see if we can maybe get this to tighten up a little more. Maybe since the washer's not there, we'll get it in a little deeper and then maybe it'll come out the rest of the way. So I got a lot of weight on it now. It's lifting my cart a little bit off the ground. And let's see if we can... It'd be nice if I could get a little gap in there, but it doesn't seem to be moving. I do have a little bit of dust comes out each time. So I think if I keep working this and maybe use a little more heat, we'll keep at it. All right, through the back and forth and back and forth, snapped the head of the bolt off. So we worked it too hard. Now that bolt is broken inside. So what's the next step? So I do have a TIG welder. So my next opinion for myself is to get my cutoff wheel in here in this midsection and slice deep in and cut that bolt off to get my engine block off and I can go ahead and TIG weld that back up when I'm done. JB weld, some people would say. Not a bad thing to do, JB weld works really well. And what we're planning to do when I'm slicing through here is only cut the bolt to not cut into the midsection too far. I don't know, I don't know. You're not gonna know until you cut it and see what happens. I may remove this post here just to make it a little easier to get in there with my cutoff wheel, but that's the next step. Unless some of you think there's a better way to do this. If you do, please comment and tell me what you think is the best way to get this off of here. But I'm going to go ahead and move forward to get this engine block off. Please like, subscribe, send me any comments that you have. And we look forward to seeing you soon on the Outboard Day channel. Take care.